Total internal reflection is used in fiber optic cables to keep the light beam inside the core and make it act as a light pipe. So let's look at how that might happen. Fiber optics, the basic essentials are you have a core of one material and that material is going to have a higher index of refraction than the material that is wrapped around it. So here I have index of refraction of 1.9 in the core and then the material wrapped around the outside has an index of refraction of 1.2. And so the idea is you want to start with the light ray in this inner material. When it hits this boundary, because it's going from a high index of refraction to a low one, if the incident angle is bigger than the critical angle, it's going to reflect and go back inside. Once again, when it hits this boundary, it's going from high to low, so we want it to totally internally reflect, and you can have it bounce back and forth without leaving uh, this inner core. So let's see what the critical angle is for this boundary and how this might work. So if my light ray is starting inside here, I want to find the critical angle for this boundary. So N1 would be 1.9, since I'm going to start with my light ray inside the core. N2 will be 1.2, and I'm looking for the critical angle. So N1 sine theta i equals N2 sine theta r. That's Snell's law. Now if I want the critical angle, I'm going to remember that the critical angle is an incident angle and it causes a refracted angle of 90 degrees. So N1 is 1.9. My incident angle is the critical angle. N2 is 1.2 and the critical angle causes a refracted angle of 90 degrees. So now calculating what that is Go ahead and try it on your calculator and make sure you come out also with 39.2 degrees. So this means in order to get total internal reflection, I need to have an incident angle that's larger than 39.2. So I'm going to decide, since I was not given a light ray coming in here, and I want to illustrate a fiber optic cable, I'm going to choose an angle of um, 40, I'll say about 50 degrees. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. So I'm going to have my light ray hit this boundary with an incident angle of 50 degrees. But I'm starting inside, inside the core. Okay, so my incident angle is 50 degrees and I want to double check that that is right. 50 degrees. Okay, so my light ray is incident in this higher index of refraction, higher index of refraction material at 50 degrees. When it hits this boundary, because 50 degrees is bigger than the critical angle, it will have total internal reflection. Well, reflected angle is equal to the incident angle, so I just need to measure 50 degrees from the normal. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. So here's the light ray bouncing now off, reflecting off that boundary. Now don't get carried away when you're drawing this light ray, because right here now it's hitting a boundary. It goes in a straight line until it hits another boundary. Then you have to figure out what's going to happen now. Is it going to refract through this boundary? This is a boundary between the 1.9 and the 1.2 material again. Remember the 1.2 material surrounding the core. Well, what is the angle of incidence? You can measure it, or you could use geometry, but if you measure it, you're probably going to need to extend your light rays so you can measure them with a protractor this large. So it looks like 50 degrees. Well, what's the critical angle for this boundary? Well, it's incident in the 1.9 material, and it's going to the 1.2 material. So it's the same exact boundary that we had at the top of the core. So the critical angle is still 39.2, and since our incident angle is larger than 39.2, it 
we have total internal reflection occurring again at 50 degrees. So here is the reflected light ray. Okay, and you can draw the normal. Now we're hitting a boundary again. What's going to happen here? Well, the incident angle is still 50 degrees. And so you end up with this light ray that just bounces back and forth, staying inside the core and not refracting out.